You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so glad you could be with me. We've got a great show, and it features a friend, Marguerite Manning, and she is a cosmic astrologer. It's pretty fascinating. And she's really right on target. So she focuses really on the past life and what you're bringing into this life that makes things a little awkward or difficult. And she lets you know what may have happened. It's so fascinating. She's always right on target. And gosh, well, she's another Gemini. So we call her selves twins and she is just delightful i think i've known her for about um i don't know coming up on 14 years she's just fantastic and you know what else i've noticed she doesn't age at all (laughs) she's pretty fabulous so i want you to sit back relax get a cool beverage and let's dive in to marguerite Manning and the past lives. It's so fascinating. You're going to love it. We'll be right back after these messages. It's here. It's hot. And it's a must read. It's the science behind the Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Did you know that every human uses only a small portion of their powerful mind? Jules Johnson, International Certified Hypnotherapist, wants to introduce you to your powerful mind in order to create your dream life. In as little as one session, Jules guides you into releasing limiting beliefs that keep you from achieving wealth, health, better relationships, and even true love. Schedule a session in Palm Springs or set up a Skype video session for those nationally and internationally. Jules would love to serve as your guide into living your dreams. Go to creativeguidedimagery.com or call 951-201-2166. That's creativeguidedimagery.com. You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network, heard by millions worldwide through 38 internet radio stations and in over 135 countries. Be sure to sign up for your monthly updates and get all the latest information on LOA radio events such as cruises, workshops, and seminars, as well as information on the latest shows, topics, and guests. Go to LOARadioNetwork.com and sign up today. Well, welcome back, Marguerite Manning, my twin sister (laughs) in the cosmos anyway. Uh, So glad to have you back. Thank you so much, my soul sister, my Gemini soul sister. Yes, we are. I truly believe we are twins from another lifetime. Maybe separated at birth, but found our way back to each other in this one. (laughs) You know, that's so true because... I just found out we're the exact same age. I didn't know. I didn't know that. And the same month. So, you know, (laughs) you can still be a Gemini and and be, you know, early or late May and not necessarily born in June. So that's interesting too. So, you know, we're not that far apart. Well, it's interesting that we found each other. So uh, you're all the way on the East Coast and I'm in the West Coast. So 
it's amazing the miracles in life that occur that we just don't even recognize. And every day I start noticing, wow, that's really synchronicity. It really is. And, and that's what they say. There's really, there's, you know, if karmically speaking as a karmic astrologer, there's no such thing as coincidence. It's just the universe making itself known and reminding you of certain, certain, uh, uh, let's say lessons or people that you signed up to re reconnect with in this lifetime. And that's what's so interesting is the people that feel familiar are the situations that we just take to right away, inevitably, I can match them up in the, in the two people's charts without really, really trying because it's almost as if our, our souls really are on a path, but because we have the free will in this lifetime, just like we do when we're going to college or classroom, not showing up if we don't want to, we tend to look at those as coincidences, not, hey, you know what? I'm actually showing up today. So that's why this is happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Well, I know that um, right now we are in Mercury retrograde. And I got to be very truthful. I dread Mercury retrograde because anything that goes wrong for me goes wrong during this period. There's delays there's missing Best people right. yeah uh transportation communication you know everything exactly. seems to be going wrong at this time so you can shed a little bit of light on um what is really happening i have an article it's on my website i think and i sent, sent it to you and what i what i try to to you know inform people about that is that for every universal influence or happening, there's actually a universal reason for it happening in our lives. And as everybody know, Mer knows, Mercury retrograde is not an actual physical occurrence. Mercury does not go okay. travel backwards in the sky. No, it's, it's an optical illusion. But perspective is everything in astrology. So that there's a reason, as I say in the article, that this planet of the mind and our connections to each other and, and information, why would it be pretending for three weeks every year to go backwards in the sky or make us think that it's doing to go backwards? And I truly believe there's a very good reason for it. If you understand the physical occurrence of Mercury retrograde, Mercury retrograde when Mercury is the very smallest planet in the solar system with the closest orbit to the sun, when it passes us in, in, that, in that orbit, because that orbit is so short, it immediately, instead of continuing on further in the sky, starts looping to the other side of the solar system to go around the sun. Where our perspective here on Earth, we don't see that loop. And as I say in the article, we don't see it loop. And for that reason, that's how the cosmic illusion begins first, because the minute Mercury gets to the other side and starts moving around the sun, it appears to us from this planet as if it's traveling backwards against the stars. So for that three-week period, so our orbit catches up and we can actually see we're behind it again and we can see it going forward, it appears to be going backwards. But that appearance is very, that, that perspective, because perspective is everything for us on this planet, it's very, very significant. I believe, karmically speaking, it's when we on this planet get a three-week period to go back and find out everything that eluded our conscious awareness in the last 88 days when we're before Mercury was retrograde. That's so that's 88 why, days. Now that's important right there. Almost that's three months. Point. Almost three months. So uh, you, best time to find anything. That's why I say in the article, I'm not afraid of Mercury retrograde. Now don't get me wrong. This is not the time you should be signing up, you know, to get you shouldn't be getting married, signing documents, because all the things that you didn't know about in the last 88 days are coming to the surface. That's why the toaster has to be or you missed your flight. There might have been something wrong with the plane that just came to someone's attention and you should be really, really happy about that. So Mercury retrograde is more about annoying setbacks, but we get so focused on that that we, re we don't even bother to look for the information that's coming to the surface at the time that caused those setbacks because that's really significant to us. And, and I've, had, I've had people say to me, I take when my children were younger, and even me now, when I go for a specific tests, maybe health tests or 
physical test. I'll do it if one of my grades is red, one of my grades is retrograde. Really? People, yes. And people say to me, oh, you know, you're going to have to do it over. Well, yeah, if they find something wrong, but I want them to find whatever's wrong. So that's the key. This is not the time to, you know, go getting surgery that you don't need, like cosmetic surgery. It's time to find the right plastic surgeon or the right form of Botox if that's what you want. But, and this is not the time to get married. But what it is the time to go out and find Mr. Right, because Mr. Wrong will certainly pop up on your radar screen. Not, you know, he's not going to get away with anything during a Mercury retrograde. Information, this is the time, and it's happened to me on so many occasions, that if you ask, you'll get the information. If you look, you'll find it because Mercury is bringing everything up to the surface. That's why all the default, the defective merchandise is coming to the surface now. That's why if you buy it, you're probably going to get it. All the, all the secrets that were kept from you in the last 88 days, you do, but you have to be proactive. You have to look for them. When my, um, for, I tell this story all the time, when my first book was published, uh, I found out in a very major astrological magazine, I don't want to say which one, it was going to be reviewed. And inadvertently, I didn't even realize that I was doing this during the Mercury retrograde. I know they never released the reviews until it appears in the magazine. So I, I wasn't subscribing to that magazine at the time. So I called in New York and I was going to ask them if I could buy a copy or if they could send me a copy, not realizing they did that anyway. And when I got on the phone and I said, you know, I'm Marguerite Manning, um, my book, Cosmic Karma, is being reviewed in next month's um, issue, the girl at the desk said to me, oh, would you like a copy of that review? And I said, you bet I would. And she was never supposed to send it. I was never supposed to get it. But during that time, and it's not her fault, during that time when, when Mercury is retrograde, people can't, don't, and won't keep a secret. It's impossible if they're asked because Mercury is in there spinning its wheels and spinning itself into finding, bringing everything up that missed our conscious awareness in the last like, 90 days. So that's why instead of hiding under the bed, as I say in the article, a lot of people want to do um, to avoid, you know, not having their, having their internet down or losing their luggage. The idea that I use, I prepare for that. And I have a polished, uh, you know, some well-polished apologies handy for things that I accidentally sent to people that I shouldn't be. But if you go looking for things during this period of time or asking questions, you are bound to get the best, the best answers. And the be I look for, um, I look for software programs. I don't buy them. But I look for them because I'll find things that I never knew existed before. Or I'll ask questions during a Mercury retrograde, and sometimes even without realizing you're doing, it, and you find out things that you didn't even know, or, or people accidentally send you emails that they shouldn't. Um, so this is a really good time not to be, you will have some delays, you'll have setbacks, but I measure it and balance it against all the information. But then you too, you're a Gemini, knowledge is power. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe that Mercury goes to retrograde once every 88 days to remind us that ignorance is not bliss. And finding the information may be annoying and unfortunate and inconvenient. How many times? Has something come to our attention that was so inconvenient, but we were so happy we found it. And, and, and a relative of mine in particular, they're fine now, no setbacks, and everything's taken care of. But following, you know, that 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 premise of looking for things when Mercury retrograde had a test done when Mercury retrograde found out that they had cancer in such early stages, it was annihilated, eliminated very quickly. Wow! And that's the thing. Like you don't, we don't want no more always better off knowing it the sooner the better and yeah. so that's why I am very and I've taught my children and my family that this is the time to look for what you couldn't find any other time in well, the last 90 days you know what this is really fascinating because what we're finding out we still have this COVID thing going on mm -hmm. but we this new variant is very mild and so I've had quite a few people in my family catch it. Oh, actually, I know a whole bunch of people. I never knew anybody had COVID, the real COVID before, the dangerous one. But now it's like everybody has it. And now the good thing about it, it's annoying, but exactly. they are they are 
creating this immune system that can really withstand it. I mean, it's going to be over and done with, hopefully. Yeah. And that's her immunity too. It's almost as if, you know, when my, when my, um, nobody wants, oh, my daughter is a nurse and um, I was not a very smart, you know, I was not a very, let's say, I would never stay away from my children because of COVID. A mother rarely will. And right. she was working at the hospital and it was in the very beginning really stressful for her and she had some very bad days and I was over at her house hugging her. Fortunately, I never got COVID. She did later on. She caught the original strain. Wow. But, she, but she's 30 or so. And and so she I said, I'll, I'll bet this was the worst you ever felt. And she said, no, actually I had flus that were worse. So you know I think for everyone it's so different how they experience it. But I agree with you. This is the only way for us to get herd immunity is for, and, and I think what people don't realize is that every single virus, they start, it always starts at least how many flus have, and it has to, it has to uh, morph into something else in order to stop killing the host and stay alive. Right. So eventually it gets milder and milder and milder and milder. No one wants to be on the first wave of that, but that's very typical of any virus. It's trying to stay alive. And that's the only way by it trying to stay alive and morphing into something, you know, less, uh, less deadly is how we develop herd immunity to yeah. begin with. So I think it just took everybody a long time to figure out what this one was all about. Yeah. But um, I said, I'm probably, you know, I, I have, I have, uh, let's see, I have really probably ticked COVID off many times this year. And that's probably why I'm going to be getting it, so I'm sure. But I, I refuse to let it, you know, interfere with my, my uh, the only role I refuse to let it interfere with my, it was that of a mother in my lifetime. Because, you know, you know, you just, that, that was my, that's always been my first role. And when your children need you, I've never been worried about it. Oh, yeah, I know. But it's really amazing if you stop and think about it. I think everybody's so tired of it that we're manifesting ourselves out of it we're just like i've had enough let's go forward here well, you watch with mercury in retrograde now for the next three weeks we're going to be finding out information i yes. think other people knew three months ago but we're just going to be finding out about covid now and exactly. i don't think i don't think it's going to be i don't think anybody's keeping good information from us i don't you know i think i think because people don't know they're not willing to share things right away until they're sure so I really have a feeling that we're going to be getting a lot of information in these next few weeks to put us in a really good spot where COVID will be behind us. Yes. For example, the hydroxychloroquine, which I'm on, I've been taking it for uh, months now as a preventative because right. I'm of the age. So we're finding out that cancer is a virus too. Ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine are great cancers inhibitors. They actually prevent cancer or they do make it go away. So we are finding out some ma really magical things that we've never known before. Well, at least the public hasn't known. And boy, we can turn that around and reduce the fear. Because if we reduce the fear, well, you know, everything tends to go better because we're not, it's the fear that actually causes a lot of the sickness. Very true. And you know, the thing, and my doctor has told me this, um, because it's a genetic strain in our family. My doctor told me this, he said, you know, as much as we've improved uh, research when it comes to cancer, cancer is one of the things everybody on this planet dreads. We've been terrified of it forever. We have been. And what, it, what he has told me and she, two different doctors, is that, you know, they still do not have, like, they have a lot of preventatives and things that they think help, but they just still do not have a magic bullet for cancer. And they believe the only way, the only way to really conquer cancer is early detection. Yes. So early detection. So that's why I tell people race mercury retrograde if there was ever a poster planet for early detection of anything it's, it's mercury retrograde so knowing things early is how to save ourselves it's right. how to, to protect ourselves and so often and I'm, i've been guilty of it too in the past like it's like 
I don't want to know that information. So you don't go to the doctor, you don't get the test. And or you're worried about it having to be done over. So you don't go during the mercury retrograde. And it might have to be done over, especially if they tell you something. But that's why you want to do it when mercury is retrograde, any kind of a test where you're looking into your health, you're trying to get answers for anything. This is the best time to go look into it. Mm. Interesting, interesting. So it's because it's the time I do want to stay away from doctors. But then again, I do like to stay away from doctors as well. Oh, I do too. Yes, I do too. No, no I, one I'm not. But also, we we are finding out all the notorious stuff too that's coming out right now about the money that's being made off of the illnesses. There's a lot of money to be made off of cancer. There's a lot of money to be made off of COVID. We've already seen it. So the whole thing is, is that now it's flipping around and we're learning what is really going on with all of this. Has it been a big money making machine or is it? something that can be refined so that we can finally be away from it. And I believe it's the latter that we, we are learning so much that we don't have to be fearful of things anymore. We don't even have to be fearful of cancer. We just don't need. And again, the fear, which is why they tossed it out, I think is they know that fear will generate illness. They know this. And fear usually comes from a lack, a lack of knowledge. Yeah. And that's what I said before. Knowledge is power. We're learning things now. And the way to keep us fearful is to keep us in the dark about things, to keep mm-hmm. us ignorant. So why would we let that happen to us? The idea is to find out things on our own as well and not to listen to one particular source. That's why I think it's really important for everyone to talk to their own doctors and their own healthcare providers and no part of our government or the people that that, are, that we uh, rely on for other things should be in charge of, to that large degree, in ch- charge of our health, where they're deciding what's good for us. We're all so different in what we require and what we need, what our family history is. So I think it's really important for us to know what's going on out there, but to still uh, directly deal with the doctors that we trust who've been taking care of, care of us or our families for years. I think yeah. that's the most important for people for us to be listening to now. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you 100%. So as far as um, cosmically, we're going through this period, and I believe it's going to turn out just perfectly. Everything that we need to know will be showing up at the end of this retrograde or during it, of course. so that we're going to be on the flip side. I I agree with you. Yeah, think about what 88 days ago was, was maybe three months ago, back in November, December, and January. So you said maybe the end of October through now. Think of all the things that came out in the news, all the things that we learned or, or thought we learned. This is what's going to be revised in the next three weeks. If there's anything that was misinformation, misguided, not true, or gave us an impression that maybe we shouldn't have had, we will find it now, but here's the key. You've got to be proactive. You've got to look for it. You've got to turn on the news and those source you trust. Or you've got to actually research something or get online and look for something because it doesn't fall down your chimney. It has to be, you have to be proactive during this time because again, that's the old, what I call hiding under the bed routine. We hide from Mercury retrograde. We learn nothing. And we... We may have some, some, as I said, setbacks or delay, delays or annoying inconveniences, and they can be annoying. Um, but what we gain by looking for it or taking the initiative to find information that we're looking for, it's, it's very interesting, too, because many times during a, a retrograde, I'll find, I might not find the information I'm looking for at the time, but I'll find a new source that later on brings me the correct information, something or someone I never knew even existed before. So that's why it's important. You're certainly not going to make Mercury retrograde more powerful by looking for things, but you can make yourself more ignorant, you know, and and more vulnerable by not knowing what's happening, you know. Exactly, exactly. So the action that you take is 
you just start digging in to think of the things. Yeah, I make a list before it goes retrograde for everything I want to know during the next rewind so that I can say, oh, that's right. I remember I wanted to find this out. I want to ask this one this. And right now, the way to use it best to your advantage in your own personal uh, in your own personal life is right now in the sky, Mercury went retrograde on January 14th. That perspective changed for us on January 14th. Right. Went retrograde at 10 degree Aquarius. Now it's going to be backpedaling for three weeks and then it's going to go direct again at 24, 24 degree Capricorn. Now where that span falls in your birth chart is where things are going to be kind of dug up and brought to your attention. Wherever that sign, whatever house rules in your birth chart, whatever area of life, 10 degree Aquarius to 24 degree Capricorn falls in your birth chart. I think, let me see, I have your chart here, uh, Jules. Um, yours falls in the seventh house. In the seventh house of your significant others and, you know, your really important one-on-one relationships, which, okay, so now you might have some, this is the perfect opportunity when it's retrograding through the seventh house for you to actually find out whether assumptions you've made about those closest to you in the last three months are real or misperceived. Because the misdata or defects that are coming to you during the next few weeks, weeks will give you that second chance to take a look at any one type of partner, spouse, or people, really one-on-one significant relationships that you thought you knew. This has happened to me so many times when it's retrograded through the sevens. During this time, you can actually mend broken relationships if you want to, because you might have been annoyed at something for something that wasn't true, or somebody misinformed you about, or just find out what you always wanted to know about someone who was close to you. If you don't, let you, but you just have to not let yourself in this point when it's going through your seventh house, get overwhelmed in the unfairness. Because that's what the seventh house represents, the Libra balance, the unfairness of it all, the unfairness of relationships, the unfairness of it. Don't get, I'm not saying don't acknowledge that, but don't get caught up in that. And you can find some really um, pivotal information about the relationships in your life, the counselors you had, the advisors, the doctors, uh, your children, your grandchildren, things that if you, even if you wanted to know, I've, I've used this period to find out the perfect birthday present my son might want that he hasn't shared with me, something like that, like any kind of little information or bit about the significant relationships in your life that you were not able to get before. This is a perfect time. Oh, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. So now astrology wise, um, you dig into the past lives as well. You can decipher what it is that they're working on in this life that probably happened that they didn't resolve in the previous life, right? That's where karmic astrology for me starts is on the 12th house. The the first 12th house represents in the birth chart, those first 30 degrees, I think we've spoken about this before, above the eastern horizon, as it's seen from your birthplace. According to Edgar Casey and a lot of spiritualists, this part of the sky is exactly where the soul enters to come into the physical lifetime during whatever lifetime it is. This is the, the portal for the soul. So by looking there in the sign on your 12th house, and people say, oh, Marguerite, I don't have plans in the 12th. You don't necessarily need plans in the 12th. Everybody has a sign was on that part of the sky at the moment they were born. And that sign for me is a real karmic peephole into their last life and the losses they had, the improper programming as a result of those losses and what's stifling them now in this lifetime because it's baggage they brought in. And the only way to eliminate this baggage, because the soul has a deeply buried back here, the soul doesn't want to address it, is to consciously in this lifetime, bring it up to the conscious word, address it, and let it go. And once, it's like anything else, once we're aware of this on a conscious level, this pattern that we have of being fearful, avoiding something, or being overwhelmed by something, once we have a conscious awareness, we can say to the soul, that was yesterday, yesterday's gone. It's, it's amazing how on a conscious level, we start to recognize that pattern when it comes. We start to recognize that 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 influence and that hold it has on us and we can say that you know that was yesterday yesterday's gone and we feel like emboldened or empowered 
to laugh at that or to push past it, maybe when we haven't before, because we really thought this was an integral part of us. This was who we are. We have to be afraid of that because something terrible is going to happen. But what if we found out that the reason we are so afraid of it is because in the past, something terrible did happen. It's wow. a memory, not a, not, a, not a portent of something to come, but it's a memory our soul is holding on to from the past. And while memories can be very nostalgic and, and give us lots of you know, fuzzy, warm and fuzzy feelings, many times, if we don't understand that they're memories, they can terrify us and cripple us, keep us paralyzed from being what we should be in this life. Oh, wow. You know, that holds true for a lot of people. It does. A lot it, it of people. It does. Wow. And that's why I, last year, and you and I went through this, I developed the, the do-it-yourself workbook. So you can get to the heart of the actual issues. You know, you, you might want a session or you might want to read some of the books, but this is for someone who wants to try to, the first step of doing it themselves. And not only does the workbook show you how to identify what, what you know your overwhelming loss was from yesterday but what you can do now in this lifetime to get rid of that baggage today what steps you can take now to address it and get rid of it so that you can live up to the destiny that your soul chose for this lifetime and i think empowering people that way i always really believe that it's like even being being in a car doing any kind of travel any kind of journey that we take you know, in order to get where we're going, it's so important to know where we came from. It's so important to know how far we've come and not just get overwhelmed. You know, well, I'll never get to New York at this pace. But he said, hey, wait a minute, you came all the way from California. Look where you are. You're so close. So looking back over our shoulder is really important to see how much we have advanced and progressed. But our problem is, with the soul in charge of the rear view mirror, many times we go back and live it. Yeah. We don't just look into it, we live it. And that's what this workbook for karmic astrology in general. I love what it does for people. It gives them the perspective they need. They put themselves back behind the driver's wheel and their soul in the back seat. We need our soul. We need our soul to help us make some really to connect spiritually to the to the collective consciousness to get in touch with our psyche, to be able to rise above our physical shortcomings. But when we rely on the soul to direct us in this physical plane, then we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because the soul loves the past. It loves anything that feels familiar. And that's exactly where it goes. And we need some rational uh, clinical judgment in this lifetime. We need our soul to show us what we what we want to do and how we want to evolve on a spiritual level in this physical lifetime. But we need Mars, which is our physical energy in action and has this all ego. We need Mars to get us through this physical existence. So our, our challenge in this lifetime is having one foot in the spiritual world and one foot in the physical world. And the minute we lift one up and put them both in one particular area is when we fumble. Mm, mm, mm. So, Give us an example of somebody who's had a session with you and what did they discover and how could they move forward from it? I think well, this is so fascinating. Yeah, well, I just love for it. For instance, someone like yourself or, or anyone else who came into this incarnation with Gemini, let's say Gemini. You just have, I, I, we both have the sun in Gemini, but I don't have Gemini on the 12th house. You do. So what that means is that in your last lifetime, your communications and your ability to connect with the people in your immediate and an intellectual environment was, in your mind, something that got you into serious trouble. You blamed, <laughs> you blamed yourself for some terrible things that went on because it was on your watch, on your watch that this happened, or you believed it was on your watch. So your improper programming in that lifetime was to keep your thoughts and opinions to yourself, mm. stifle yourself because the community kind of turned their back on you. So you believe that there was something wrong with you. But whenever Gemini is on the 12th house, always a brilliant mind, always a brilliant mind that was, was expected to be a major voice in their community. And because of this terrible accident that they took on, was their improper programming, was completely their fault. Quite often it wasn't either their information, their goods, 
or their 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 processes that were being used, they took it. They took on the responsibility and decided to shut themselves off from communications. So early on in this life, Jules, you and every other Gemini on the twelve had a hard time feeling as if you could express yourself clearly or convey your thoughts effectively. And that wasn't anything. I know you so long. You were incredibly articulate, and very 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 smart and engaging, but I will bet you there was a time early on in this lifetime, and that might even be why you're in radio now, because there's a lot of anonymity hanging out behind a mic, especially, you know, before we were video, there was the video to radio, where you felt you could express yourself and help people the way you wanted to and were doing in that lifetime in a very specialized community, but were made to believe you brought great loss and pain to so now you want to heal it because you that's what you were doing in that lifetime. Amen. And you were halted. So that's the improper program. And I don't know, can you speak to that early on in this life? Did you ever have, uh, did you ever believe that you, did you ever have, not a fear, but a, a real stress about standing up in front of talking to people? Or oh, my yourself? goodness. Oh, yeah. I would shake like you wouldn't believe. I couldn't even get the words out. I fumble and everything. But it's it's really amazing because now I'm seeing, you know, uh, 10 years ago, my dad died and I took care of him for 10 years alone. And to this day, after my dad died, my brothers and sisters won't have anything to do with me. They will not talk to me. I haven't seen them. And it's like, OK. You know what's so interesting about that when Gemini's on the, well, the sign of the twin, you lost a sibling or neighbor in that lifetime. And you made, you took on the responsibility when they, when they lost their lives or something terrible happened to them, you took it on as your fault. So guess what your soul does now? Your soul unconsciously avoids a good relationship with your siblings because you're more comfortable or being the community scapegoat or the fraternal doormat. You feel as if that's restitution, you deserve it. So I urge you to say, uh uh, it wasn't my fault. No, it wasn't. And you watch when you start taking that attitude that you don't deserve to be treated by siblings like that, it will stop. I, I bet that you'll get a call from one of your brothers or sisters for no reason, but it's almost as if your soul feels better. Your soul feels the guilt ridden soul feels, I deserve this. Uh no, I know, I, know <laughs> I know consciously you don't, but you know what it is? It, a lot of times it's because you don't want to interact with them now because they make you feel guilty. Well, it could be, could be. I, I don't choose to. Exactly. So I don't choose to way. be hurt. I, I just, exactly. don't, I don't need to be hurt anymore. I don't need to. And I, and I want you to, and I want you to uh, take, and maybe you already have, take on the attitude that, you know, um, you did nothing to hurt anyone. Oh, gosh, no, I did the opposite. No, no, you did nothing to hurt anyone, but it ne never fails. When Gemini is on the 12th, there's always an issue with neighbors or siblings that oh, yeah. started oh, that. in the last lifetime. Always. Oh, it's my goodness. Always. You see, that just resolved this whole issue for the past 10 years. What you just told me it was so powerful because I always thought, I don't understand why they thought I was doing something when all I did was strive to take care of my father. You see, they're holding you responsible. Yeah. In this life for something that went on a long time ago. Isn't and that you held yourself responsible. And it wasn't even your fault back then, but because you took on the responsibility, now everybody's going to be your hold. So that's why release yourself of that responsibility. Even not just on the conscious. And another great thing about Gemini on the 12th, because you were forced to suppress your mind and your voice back in that lifetime. Think of it. Your thinking was forced to operate on a subliminal level. So as yes. a result, as a result, people with Gemini on the 12th in this lifetime are usually very psychic, very mm. intuitive, because their thinking was forced to an unconscious level in their last lifetime. Ah, very interesting, very Isn't interesting. That, that. So I probably reincarnated with all my brothers and sisters on purpose, but now it's like, I've had enough kiddos. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know what it is? We're, we've, we're given the choice before we come back in. Do you want to resolve this? Yeah, we're in the spiritual world flying around feeling pretty good. Sure. Then we get here and it's too hard for some of us. 
So we go back to our old habit patterns, like maybe some of your siblings have done. And many times we don't evolve together. Yeah. So the way that it's set up is the people who do want to move forward do, and other people come into their lives to play those roles that the, the ones who originally wanted to don't, or sometimes they don't show up at all and somebody else is forced to come in and play that role. But your, your soul is not forced to wait for the people that were with you in a previous life if they don't want to sign up now in this lifetime. If you're willing to address the things in your last lifetime that hold you back, the soul evolves, always evolves. And what we have to remember in this lifetime is that you know, and many times I say to my clients, and I said it's my kids, that we have this, this uh, tier where the parents are the smart ones and the children learn from the parents. And, and on a, a human level, that's very true. But I have found more often than not, we are learning from our children are here in this lifetime to teach us, our souls, many things that we didn't get in the last one. Mm. So we tend to look at our parents and deify them. And then like when you were taking care of your father, I'm sure this happened realize that he was just a human being he wasn't a god he was just a human being and you've actually in some way spiritually evolved further than him in this lifetime and you can see that perspective that he couldn't see on a lot of different things as my children will do with me so we tend to look at it backwards and think that we you know our, i always tell my kids and i have for eons is that you know i know they're going to in the first six years in therapy on me, the mother. That's always what it's about. You know, because but then look at their moons. Wherever the moon is, the sign that the moon is in at the moment of your birth talks about your 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 um domestic and nurturing, the, the nurturing you got. Now, if your previous mother, if you had one, but whoever did the nurturing for you in a previous life in your domestic scene, that's represented by the moon. So most people I know, every one of their children have different moon signs. So no one woman can be all that different, but their children's perception of her can be. So that's why it's important to understand that you're here not to be your child's friend. You're here to nurture them in a way that they weren't nurtured in the last lifetime. And many times that might be with discipline that they didn't get, with boundaries that they didn't get, or maybe with, with spoiling them that they didn't get. It's different for each one. But that doesn't mean they should have different rules. It's just you're just knowing that your approach to taking care of them and nurturing them is so much more effective. It's how they process the nurturing and what they need. Fascinating. Fascinating. Boy, oh, yeah. that, that is really right on target. Now you see people, uh, you counsel people. Correct. I know that you're a best-selling author, but you still will accept appointments. Sessions. I do sessions and I've try to because the sessions are you need I, I do like three hours with the chart before two and a half hours with the chart before I can get the client on the phone. So it's a lot of intense math 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 and work to do a really good one hour session with all the information that you can glean out of this chart. And I try to get this information to people on all different price points. That's why I have the books, I have articles, podcasts, and now this 12th house workbook, which is very, very it's only $17.99 to start the process of doing it yourself. But I do do sessions. Um, I call them 12th house soul sessions. We used to take the 12th house. We go back to the 12th house and find out all the information about your previous physical existence on this planet. And it's very eye-opening. And I, and I started doing, I think I've told you many times, I started doing it with my children when they were very young. And this was before I wrote my first book. It was what prompted my first book. And as a result, the um, the the outcome and the the what I, the immediate difference that I saw in the way my children were responding to information and to how I was counseling them or trying to to guide them was incredible and and children are the closest because they're so young their souls are the closest to the other side as it is so they they have very little um they have let very little pushback when you talk to them and you say, you know, I know a long time ago, this is what happened. And, and they're so open to that, that, and yet they're also very honest. If you weren't right on, they'd be first, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so many times they would be like, okay. And that's when, when I started talking to them like that and saying, I know this was something that you were really frightened of, but there's no reason for that now because of this, this, and this, or I know this is something that you feel you should be able to do, but you're not the first born in the family this time. And Instead of having any pushback about things like that, they're going, okay, I got it. But 
I think if you all took, and that's why I had a, um, I started a workbook uh, years ago, Parenting Yesterday's Child, where just knowing where your children's sun, um, moon, and Saturn placement are, those were their parents and who they were in a previous life, can tell you what you're here to be to them in this lifetime, what you, what they, why they chose you. And I truly believe we choose who we're coming into it with in this lifetime. That's why I say to people, you know, it's never been about blaming our parents because we chose them. And the reason we chose them was to learn or get past what we didn't get in our last lifetime. And again, they're not gods. So even though we deify them, they are not constantly, they were here for a specific purpose. Now that doesn't mean we have to tolerate behavior, maybe abusive behavior from abusive parents or alcoholism or anything that does go on in many many homes and many lives, many of the challenges. That's not, I'm not condoning that. I'm saying that if we came to someone who had an addiction problem or was abusive, it's because we wanted to move beyond that in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's something that paralyzed us in the last lifetime. And now we've promised that we're not going to let it do so again in this one. So it's really important for us to actually address it and acknowledge it and find a way for it not to stymie us and keep us from what we're supposed to be in this lifetime. Wow. Wow. That is so fascinating. Now, how many books do you have out? Well, I have uh, Cosmic Karma, which was my first one and talks about, um, the, in particular, the 12th house with the karmic significance of your birth chart and how your birth chart is your soul's contract with the universe and how we came into this lifetime and explains the basics of karmic astrology. And then I have sign language, which is the next book, which talks about the sign placement of every single birth energy in your chart, from the sun to the moon to, to Pluto, that tells me within you what your past was like. What that I always say the story is in the stars. The sign placement of each birth energy reflects your past life, your past story, your energy with that planet. Mars sign talks about how you got angry in your last lifetime, how you, how you uh, the physical skills that you had in your last lifetime and how you used them. Now, the, the house placement of Mars, which means it's mathematical position to your birthplace, that tells me you've got your promise with that energy. The sign is always about the story in your past. So that's the karmic part. But the, the house placement talks to me about what you promise to do with that energy. So sign language is a book that's just about all that, that interprets all the different sign placements of all the different planets and explains to you why each planet has the significance it does in your the significance it does in your birth chart and what each one of the signs it's placed in means where you came from and what you did with that energy in your last lifetime. Then I have Juno, which is about Juno, your karmic match made in heaven. Juno is about the asteroid Juno. And just like Juno in mythology, Zeus is Zeus's wife, Juno is the, I call it the second part of the Venus principle. Venus is what makes us get attracted to someone, what we, how people are attracted to us. So it's, it rules love, it rules lust, it rules attraction. But Juno, she's the one that rules commitment. So if you want to know how to find the relationship that's going to go the distance, Juno in your birth chart indicates where you promised the universe that you were going to get in this lifetime what your previous partner kept. Wow. How, you, how you didn't find the perfect partner yesterday because you were too willing to give up what's necessary for you to have a long distance relationship. I mean, a long term relationship today. So Juno's placement in the birth chart is really important to know what you gave up so willingly yesterday in, an, in a significant relationship and what every relationship will go right down the tubes today. It will never stand the, the test of time unless you demand to have it in your life today in your relationships today. Holy cow. And then, of I, course, I, the, and then, of course, the, um, the 12th house, unlocking your 12th house work. That's a workbook course, three, three different uh, files that just by with your birth chart and your own birth, it's very beginner friendly where you can find the sign on your 12th house, its ruler, and you get the first six keys, my first six karmic keys and uncovering your soul's past in the birth chart. And not only that. It's a workbook that helps you address those keys on a con those, the information you get on a conscious level and start using them to your advantage in this lifetime so that you can move beyond your past and start living up to your destiny, the one you chose. Wow. 
I love it. Uh, you know, so much knowledge of the past and past lives, we can really change so that we don't have to come back over and over again to experience the same thing. I don't want to come back and experience what exactly. happened after my father's death. I don't want to experience that ever again. No, I, and I understand that that's very, having lost my parents, I know, I know what you're talking about. That's really, and sometimes the things that go, that happen around that time, that they're horrific, but that's horrific. what I say to people. They say, what if I don't show up to fulfill my contract of the universe? I said, well, not like I was taught. You're not going to burn in hell. And nobody's <laughs> down in the lightning. Oh, you're not going to be hit by lightning. But cold. It's worse than that. You're going to have to do it over. Yeah. It's like, right. it's like, you know, signing up for a class and not showing up. You can't move forward without taking that class. So you're going to have to do it one way or another, maybe not this lifetime, but you will have to do it if you want to move forward. And the worst thing for me, and, and, and you know, I tell people this all the time, Edgar Casey indicated that, you know, sometimes because our lessons that we chose for each lifetime are so difficult, like maybe starving in, in India a uh, uh, hundred years ago, sometimes some of these lessons are so difficult. He was convinced that every fifth or sixth life you've got something that was more of a, a vacation life, something that was a little bit easier, still had some lessons, but it was kind of like a, a recess with a little bit of, of, of lesson going on with it. So whenever my children would get, you know, really annoyed at some of the things they have to do in there, I'd say, hey, take, you know, you think you've got it so rough now, this could be your vacation life, enjoy it, because the next <laughs> one's going to be a whole lot worse. <laughs> oh my god but that's the way we have to look at it in the sense that you know we do have it rough but compared to maybe where we've been before or where we're going the next time this could be the good one you know yeah it could very well be yeah. because it's turning out just great for me now exactly so. and that's the people who feel blessed i think the people that you know no matter what the universe throws at me in this lifetime and it's throwing some things at me i always will feel like one of the lucky ones and i think when people feel that way you know you're on your vacation life you know that you know you're not this isn't a really hard and when you're willing to address the fact that, okay i've had some stuff happen but probably not anything anyone else has in their point of different points in their life you know it's hard but being human is hard yeah. and I, I had a therapist who was using my services one time you know who does use my services with their clients say you know what people forget is that life is depressing and we can't be happy 24-7. And people who think that they should be are the ones that are probably more depressed than most of us. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's very true. So if we turn around and say, you know what? There are going to be depressing moments in our life. We have to get through them and find ways to get through them. That, And usually the only way to do that, I think, for me, and maybe you too as a Gemini, is remembering the blessings. You know, and that's, that's, that's sometimes the only thing that can get you. Yeah. That I can think, okay, you know what? At least I have this. My children are safe. Or, and, then, and then the people, other people don't eat. Some people don't have that. So they have to remember other things that are significant to them. So that's where I think we can do better at making ourselves happy, is reminding ourselves where we do have some good stuff going on. You know? That's brilliant. I love that. I love that. And something everybody had to hear. So me too, at one point. <laughs> Me too. Uh, this has been fantastic. We're all out of time, but oh, I've enjoyed this. Me too, Jules. I always do. So, you know, we have to, we have do to do it more get often. Together again for another hot topic. Yeah. Hot, hot, hot cosmic topic. Okay. Yeah. This was Mercury in retrograde, and I learned a lot just from this. We have to energy. sometimes do planets in the 12th house because you're 12th house. So we're going to have to do that one. We can spend the whole session on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All well, right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marguerite. You're welcome very much. Have a great day. Thank you so okay. much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com. And have a great week.